my son Andrew, when he contacted you and, and, and began to talk to you, he uh, came up with the most amazing story that you've gone through this last wee while in, in yeah. losing family members. Tell us, tell us what your family has experienced over the last couple of years. Um, well, you know, the last few years is just with our family. It's been um, an interesting about seven years. Um, I did. I dealt with a very serious bout of depression in ministry. I had to come through. Um, right before that, my son went through a series of depression in Bible school. A uh, pastor friend of ours called us at two in the morning one night and sent us a picture of our son. He had 60 cuts going up and down his arm. And he's just months away from graduating from Bible school because uh, he had internalized a death that happened when he was young. And as parents, we had no idea how to handle that. We didn't see the symptoms of him yeah. trying to get help. We just thought it was rebellion. Um, so, you know, we, we had that. And then just a few years ago, my, my wife ended up having five family members die within a year and a half. That's unbelievable. And they say the average person will deal with a tragic death like that close because they were all immediate family. Yeah. Two sisters, um, her mother, oh. um, her birth father, and then a, a, a brother-in-law, uh, all within a year and a half. And uh, most people only deal with death every nine to 13 years. Yeah. So like that, a very close one. And so it really, really, um, uh, you know, uh, put us in a really, really hard spot. You know, I, I, that's all I can say. I mean, it really emotionally, and w everything. Weren't some, weren't some close together as well? Yeah. Um, what happened is her first sister died in um, the middle of summer from cancer. She didn't know she had it. She died. Her second sister in November had a serious... Um, heart failure and a stroke because she did drugs. She died Christmas Eve. So we went up there to do the funeral. Her birth father, um, cause she was adopted. Her birth father, we'd known for 25 years. Yeah. Uh, in October had a massive stroke and we get up there to do the funeral. And while we're up there, he tells us, he says, uh, I don't want to live anymore and said, I'm going to quit eating and drinking and I just want to die because he couldn't do anything for himself anymore and he just didn't want to live that way. So he asked kind of permission if that was okay. The, the, the best thing that happened with that is ended up, my wife was able to lead his birth father to the Lord before he passed. So that was all within a month. I had to do two funerals uh, for her family. Then... Then a year later, so Christmas Eve, her sister died that year. Then right in January, her step, I mean, her birth father died. Uh, less than a year later, the day after Christmas, her mother died. And so, and then we had another uh, tragedy after that. So we've really gone through the ringer when it comes to pain, emotions, grieving, um, and and still being able to stay in ministry and be successful, you know, keep going, you know, thank God for I just, that. I'm sitting and listening to you. And honestly, my heart, my heart is aching for the circ circumstance. My, my dad passed away 20 years ago. My father-in-law oh, wow. passed away. They all di died on a September. So every year I was going back for a funeral kind of thing. And I, yeah. I, I, I lost my dad he, and he was my, he was my power of agreement. He was my best pal. And it's been 20 odd years and I still, there are still days when I long, I long to talk to him. I, I'd give everything I possessed away for five yeah. minutes. If I could just sit down yeah. for five minutes with, I talked to him. I, 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 in fact, I, I, I usually, when I, when he first passed away, I'd be in church. And before I go to preach, I say, I, I, Simon. Yes, yes. I, I, Simon. I'm, I'm, and, uh, and I, I'm standing in church one day, big church, I was getting ready to speak, and I, I'm, hi, hi, Simon. And it dawned on me that he doesn't speak English anymore because in heaven they don't speak English. And it, I, I'm, all this going through is the pastor's introducing me. 
And I, it, as quick as a flash, I, I remembered that in heaven, the word hallelujah, they say hallelujah in heaven. So now I'll say, Simon, hallelujah. But, but my, <laughs> heart, my heart breaks for him 20-odd yeah. years after the fact. How did you yeah. manage? Yeah. How, do you, how do you survive these waves and tsunamis of grief hitting your family without it killing you all? Well, you know, one of the reasons I talk about, um, my wife and I will talk pretty openly about um, finding freedom, dealing with grief, dealing with depression is because it seems like in the minister realm with pastors and different people, they have a hard time getting help. They have a hard so time, cool. you know, they want, they, they, I, you know, we just, we're not good as ministers getting help for ourselves so cool. and people aren't especially with the kind of the taboo over the years, depression and grief, you know, people haven't known how to handle it real well. Mm -hmm. And so we talk about it a lot. And every time I do, I get pe person after person. Um, when I teach at a Bible school and I'll bring it up to ministers or a conference, um, I'll always get people coming up and saying, thank you for sharing that because it gives them permission to go get help. They saw another pastor go through it and get help naturally. Because there's a difference between you don't give you don't give medicine for depletion, you give medicine for depression. So you got to deal with both of them differently, you oh know. And with say COVID, that, I think we're doing a lot of depletion. Say, depletion. say that again. Say define those two things. That's important. You don't give okay. medicine for so, depletion. Depletion, and that's the wear and tear of like COVID the last year. We're all feeling it every single day. Sure. Well, that's a different recovery where, you know, with depression, you know, I talk about, you know, it took me a year to year and a half praying every day. I mean, just fighting it. And I just couldn't get out of it. And a friend of, and I just broke down one day and a friend of mine, one of my mentors said, go to the doctor, get on medicine. And, you know, I needed that. And it was what helped me get over the hump. Yeah. And so to be able to for to teach on grief and you, you can't do it alone. And to, and sometimes you need medicine, sometimes you need help. And, and I just personally think that all healing comes from God, you know, God gave us what's on this earth to help us. And, but that gave me permission, like I can get help. I don't have to do this alone. And I loved your scarf story. That was great. Because it, it reminds me of a story in Bible school where back in the World War II, they had those big blimps and all these guys were on the ground, you know, remember holding the holding the ropes, up. holding it down. And a big gust came and it lifted it up and all these guys were holding on and they just started, you know, dropping after a period of time except one guy. And when they got the balloon under control, you know, they asked him when he came down and he came up to the camera, he said, listen, I just took the rope and tied it around me. It held me. I wasn't trying to hold the storm, wow. trying to do it in myself. And, you know, honestly, that has been the, one of the greatest things I've had to realize is that healing takes time. Freedom takes time. Mm. Uh, recovery takes time. It is an instant. And you just have to learn to continue to go forward and, and find the help you need, whether it's natural, and, both natural and spiritual. And, and so my wife and I, we... And the Go thing ahead. is, we all want we all want to be supermen in the ministry. We all, we all want to, you know, yes. we, we, we've been trained and taught that everything's going to be perfect. Everything's going to be hunky-dory and we're going to smile no matter what. And we've got all the answers. And frankly, ministers are as frail. I'm not a pastor. I, I'm never, I'll never be called to be a pastor. If you see me being a pastor, come and get me because I've made, I, 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 <laughs> my medication has worn off. I, I, but, I, but I love pastors. But what I've learned yeah. over the years, Paul, is that these guys are the loneliest people because they've no, they, they can't be vulnerable to anyone because if they are, then the, 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 the you know, blood's in the water and the sharks are going to get them. And, and yeah. so there's got to be a balance and there's got to be a place where uh, you, you find a buddy, someone, a buddy system somewhere that you can talk to. My phone rings constantly from pastor friends saying to me, I don't know who to talk to. I don't know who to explain the situation I'm in. And my ears have heard tons of things from pastors that I'm sure 
If I wished to, I could have destroyed and finished their ministry. But I, I, I was gracious and kind and held them and, and said, look, it's going to be okay. The storm will pass. Yeah. This whole thing today, that, that illustration I used with my grandmother and, and my mother tying her onto, I've never ever spoken about that before in my life. I mean, that just came to me. Uh, my, my mom uh, was telling me this the other day. And, and you've got to find somewhere in your storm that you can anchor yourself to. You've got to find, right. there's got to be a point that you can look at and say, I'm okay. That's still the right way up. Um, John F. Kennedy Jr., he, he killed himself in that airplane because he, he ended up in a fog bank and he didn't trust his instruments that were telling him. And he went with what he felt. And as he did, he turned the plane upside down and then pulled the yoke back thinking he was rising. And instead of that, he crashed into the water. And it's so important for you, my friend, watching us today, that you find something or someone in your life that is your point of contact, somebody that you can, that you can let steam off at and you know they're going to love you. And they're, I'll be frank with you, they're, they're not easy to find. But I want to tell you that the great anchor of all is the Lord Jesus. He is the anchor of hope in the storm. And when everyone else deserts you, when everyone else fails, I, I, know, I know what it is to be betrayed and abandoned, believe me. But I've discovered something. When all your friends fail, when everything That's falls down, Jesus remains true and faithful. And uh, Paul, continue. I, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but you, you're, no, really, I... you're really hitting home. Um, I know you're ministering to folks right now. No, I mean, I love what you're saying too. So it's great. Um, but, you know, even the whole part of the navigation, yeah. you know, during that time, because when your, your emotions, as you know, and your feelings aren't stable, you really need help of someone else to help navigate you through Absolutely. that. Yeah. And because you just, you, you just, when you're, as they say, when you're in, you don't see the trees for the forest or however that saying goes, you're in it and you don't, it, it's hard to know up and down. It's hard to navigate Absolutely. that. And so you have to have an outside source that can say, wait a minute, you need, you know, can see it and recognize it and you'll allow them to speak into your life. And so, you know, you have to have those, that safeguard and, and thank God, you know, we had some of those in place before this all happened. Yeah. And that is probably what saved us. It's, you know, we, we had those relationships of what I say, I heard a friend of mine, one of my mentors said, you have to have those people that can tell, you no, and mm -hmm. you'll listen to. Them. And so when everything started happening and different things, those mentors were those people that, you know, I wasn't thinking right all the time. My wife wasn't, our emotions were everywhere. So mm -hmm. they had to be that stability in that time to us. And we just listened to them. And we just did what they said. And yeah. I know that sounds real, you know, know. maybe not know. spiritual, but it was very spiritual. It's kind of like Paul said when he had his heart for the people, he said, I long to send Timothy to you. Yeah. And, and I believe Paul understood the value of we all need that flesh and bone person in our lives, Absolutely. not just the Bible. Absolutely. And thank God that helped us through it. And we still need it. We're, you know, we're not fully out of it. We're mostly out of it. But, you know, we still have those up and down days in my wife.